coordinates. So we're typically used to designating a point uh, or a line in a coordinate system with x and y. So we say this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, then we have a point here which is represented by x, y, where x is this distance and y is this distance. And that's one way that we can notate where a point is um, with those two spatial coordinates. But in polar, there's another way of doing that. Uh, and the way of doing that is with polar coordinates, where uh, what I can do is I can instead say, let's look at a point, make this a little bit bigger, just to see more easily. So they have an arbitrary point. Uh, and as we said before, we have x and we have y. But then I can also measure this distance. And this distance, let's call it r, okay? So that's the absolute distance from our point of interest to the origin. And then there's also this angle theta, which is here. So I can represent this point by x, y in the Cartesian plane or the rectangular plane, both words for our x, y plane, or in polar coordinates where this is uh, defined um, by the point r theta. So the way we graph something in the polar coordinate plus plane, which looks a little bit like this, I'm not gonna draw this exactly, I'm pretty bad at drawing circles, but something like this. So pretend that these are circular, and then, you know, there's some lines as well. So you have like 45 degrees. So this is not X, Y, Z, it's just, then we're gonna have, let's say this is 60 degrees and 30 degrees. Okay, so I know this isn't right, exact, but we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of go with this for now. So this is what polar uh, graphing system would look like instead of having you know a, the, the grid of the XY coordinate plane. Where if you want a point, so I want this point here, you figure you get there by going over R and then you rotate by theta, okay? So the coordinate again is R theta and you go over R and then around theta. Now, polar coordinates have a couple things that are different than, aside from you know, how you get the point, from Cartesian coordinates. First of all, uh, in the Cartesian plane, this point x, y, let's say it's 2, 3, there is no other way to designate the point 2, 3 on the rectangular plane other than 2, 3. But with polar coordinates, that's not true. Because with polar coordinates, what I can do is I can go r theta, and then I come back to that same point if I add 2 pi, and I add 2 pi, and I add 2 pi. So whereas um, polar uh, Cartesian coordinates are uniquely defined by their coordinate, there are an infinite number of ways to represent every single point on the polar coordinate uh, plane. And in fact, even without going around rotations, there's other ways to do it too. Suppose I want this point, okay? So this is r pi over two. What happens if instead I said, negative r. Well, I can do negative r, negative pi over 2, okay? So if you have positive theta, you're going, um, you're rotating counterclockwise, that's the positive direction in math and physics, and if you have negative theta, you're going clockwise. And for r, that just determines whether are you going to start off right or left. If we have positive r, we start to the right. If we have negative r, we start to the left. And from there, you can then go around in a circle. Okay, um, so that's how we use uh, polar coordinates to graph points. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how to convert between polar coordinates and Cartesian coordinates.